I uh, just got this thing. Uh, sorry, Sean, I'm such a Luddite. At times do I need to delete the app off my phone and reload from the app store to get the update? Well, Bruce, depends on the settings on your phone and your device. Um, some will update automatically. But to check, go to the app store, search the platform or Google Play and see if it says update. And if it says update, push update takes a minute at most, probably less, and you get the updated version. Don't forget for Platform Plus people, it's where the big difference is. That's where the big difference is. So get on board with Platform Plus. Um, and look, I just, uh, oh, just uh, and some feedback on the farming issue. Sean, and I have close family that are farmers. They are some of the hardest working people I know. And have often arrived late for Christmas celebrations. I had to leave holidays early to sort out water problems or staff issues. One weekend when my sister and brother-in-law were visiting, I wanted them to stay for Sunday lunch, but my brother-in-law said, the bulls don't know it's Sunday. And that sums it up. They work hard all year, often seven days a week. Thanks to them for getting us through the last few years. That's from Diana. Um, good news. Good news. Um, all right. Well, let's turn... And before we get into our, our next interview, I just want to report, and we've only checked it uh, just this morning. Remember a story we covered? I think we may have broken it. We're certainly the people who highlighted about the Māori Party's racist sports policy, which online claimed that everyone knew that Māori were basically genetically superior and like they invented running, basically, was the thing that Māori had this natural... It was very like eugenics. And David um, Seymour went to uh, the Race Relations Commissioner. He said, oh, this isn't good. I'd like to see it come down. But he did nothing. And he only made a public statement when we got him on for an interview, Ming Foon. And it was because he was kind of backed into a corner by Seymour. And Seymour said it was outrageous. And the Maori Party said nothing. Well, guess what? They have taken down the racist and offensive comments uh, from their online policy declaration on sport. The reference to everyone knowing that basically Maori were superior, genetically superior, that has disappeared. And that is a good thing to do. But of course, the Maori party do it perhaps in their cultural way, and that is they don't want to lose face. So they stay, stay staunch at the time, don't say anything and then quietly go away and do the decent thing. I'd like to say thank you to the Māori Party for not being quite so racist. Um, that is a good thing. That's a good outcome. But it took a while, took a while, didn't it, for you to see the error of your ways. And, of course, race has been an issue which has defined or certainly created a lot of um, heat this year and continues to do so. Um, the Mayor of Kaipara, Craig Jepson, I uh, went to a community or a board meeting, I think, in Mungify. And it started off with a karakia. And a karakia, in case you don't know, and many of you won't, because there's no reason you should, is a Māori prayer. Though I don't know what the Māori religion is actually called and what this works in, in denomination-wise. Jepson argued that they didn't have time for a karakia and because it was a secular organisation and governance in New Zealand is secular, that means non-religious, the karakia would have to go and boy, did he put the cat amongst the pigeons on that one. And of course, our friend Meng Fu, the Race Relations Commissioner, came out and said it was a mistake and Nanaya Mahuta waded in and the controversy, he backed down, but the controversy is still going. And if you go onto the platform website, you see one person who's written about this is Dr Don Brash, former leader of the National Party, former governor of the Reserve Bank and former leader of the ACT Party. And he joins us on the line now. Um, Don, uh, lovely to talk to you. How are you? Very well, thanks, Sean. Very well indeed. Jolly good. So what do you make of the Stoush in Kuiper with Mr Jepson? Oh, I think Mr Jepson is a courageous man, but he's absolutely right. The council, local government of New Zealand is secular and should be secular. Any kind of prayer, Maori prayer or other kind of prayer, is inappropriate in a secular environment. So he was absolutely correct and Meng Fern was absolutely wrong. Yeah, but my understanding now is, Don, that this had been a practice that had evolved over time. And surely enough, I mean, we don't live in a Nazi state. Local communities can develop their own customs. Uh, yes, I can. But I, I think the, the idea that local government is secular, non-religious, 
is a very important principle. I mean, it wasn't always true. I mean, of course, uh, for a long time, lots of uh, launches of battleships, cruisers and frigates, opening of the church hall, uh, opening the state halls, were opened by a prayer, Christian prayer. Uh, I don't think that was appropriate, and I think moving to a secular, non-religious uh, framework is absolutely the right thing to do. So I, I applaud Craig Gibson. Okay, but he has been forced to back down, and amazing, really. Um, people... Well, no, no, he hasn't, he hasn't really backed down. All he said was, uh, we'll take it in turns for members of the council to introduce, say, for introductory words, but those will not be part of the council meeting. They'll be not be part of the, the minutes council. or the record, right? That's right. Mm. That's quite important. Meantime, Nida Glavich and 600 people have signed a petition calling on him to resign and inevitably in this day and age describing him as racist, Don. Yeah, yeah that's right. I mean, you, you correctly pointed out in your introduction that the Maori Party had uh, insisted that Maori were genetically superior in some way um, and that is an incredibly racist thing to say and totally unacceptable these days. And I mean, I think uh, Dame whatever her name was, was also being Nighty entirely Glavish. racist. No, Nighty Glavish. Uh, d entirely racist. She organised this huge, great uh, march, I don't know how big it was, a couple of hundred, I, I gather, of people demanding um, that uh, Karakia be, be introduced. And in fact, I think there's now a petition running that all councils where there are Maori wards uh, must have a Karakia. There, to indeed open. there is, and uh, Michael Laws will be delving into this a little bit uh, later in the program, um, uh, a little bit later this morning, Don. So yeah, really good. now this is all part of, uh, I guess, the trend towards co-governance. I mean, the idea personally to me that we have specific Maori wards is racist in itself, um, but it would seem that that is now going to translate into, if you like, the customs and procedures of council having to integrate so-called Maori culture? Well, I, I think this will be resisted by a lot of people, and I think rightly so. In my article commenting on this Craig Gibson thing, I mentioned that I've been to a council meeting recently, uh, uh, opening an inaugural council meeting. All the male councillors were in the front row, the female councillors were in the second row, uh, entirely inappropriate for a secular body. Um, okay, on, on Mariah, if that's what Maori custom is, they're entitled to make those custom rules. But but uh, in a council meeting, male in, males in front, females behind, totally inappropriate. And of course, that meeting I was at, there were four speeches in Maori, none of them translated. And I, I don't suppose there were more than three people in the room who understood what was going on. What was that, Don? So, what, was, what was the event? Uh, it was the uh, inaugural council meeting of the Western Bay of Plenty District Council. Right. Okay. Um just, I, I sorry. I just thought Antolly ran everything up there. I didn't think no, no, had any local local democracy we, left at all. We, we, she's Tauranga. Western Bay of Plenty is is a a, a regional area around Tauranga. Uh, doesn't include Tauranga City itself. Uh, Don, the other thing I, I noticed, I think Nida Glavich saying, "Look at everything that's been taken from us." Of course, we got to have we, being the collective Maori, uh, have got to have something back. Iwi are quoted in all the articles and the controversy. But it strikes me no one goes on to a marae and takes away anything from Maori culture. They are left, or those who affiliate with iwi and run iwi and what run marae are left almost entirely to their own devices. And that would and seem appropriate. Absolutely appropriate. I mean, uh, like any group of people, if they want their own rules, that's fine. But in the secular state, but in the, in the official government or local government organisations, we should be secular, without religion and without racial bias. Don, a lot of people are going to say this of you, though, that it's not about secularism that you're concerned about. You just don't like Māori. Well, that goes as absolute garbage. I mean, I resent that deeply. As, as some people know, I'm also one of the two spokespersons for Hobson's Pledge, an organisation which is pledged to equal citizenship. My co-spokesperson is Napoli, is Māori. And, and uh, yeah. you know, people don't focus on that, that point, but there's one European, that's me, uh, or Caucasian, whatever you call us, and, and one Maori. What about Kiwi? Don, would that do? Yeah, ab absolutely fine. That'll do nicely. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> Don, this issue, particularly at a local body level, when we look at three or five waters, depending on uh, how accurate you want to be, when we look at the co-governance enshrined in that, um, when we look at the creation of wards, Maori wards... 
This still is a massive issue, the issue of co-governance and indeed the issue of race in New Zealand. And, uh, I mean, do you think we've made much progress on resolving this in the year 2022 or does it still sit there as, as oh. a problem? Oh, it sits there as a problem. And I think, sadly, the current government is driving it very hard. Or the Maori, Maori caucus within the government is driving very hard. We're sending it to the Health Authority. Um, the idea that, that Maori live less li long lives than non-Maori because of racism in the health system is absolute garbage. And lots of people have pointed that out. I mean, Chinese New Zealanders live longer than European New Zealanders do. Does that suggest the race, that the health system is favouring Chinese New Zealanders? Of course not. Lots of other factors relevant, lifestyle, drinking habits, smoking habits, uh, etc., which account for, for age, age uh, mortality rates. Don, do you think the issues of, of race, and when we say race, actually, let's not beat around the bush. We're talking about Mao, the perception of Māori and Pākehā, which is in itself a, a misperception, the idea that we're just two groups of people. And I increasingly speak to people in of Asian descent, of Pacific Island descent, who feel entirely left out of a national debate, which seems to be between two identified groups. I think that's quite right. And it's sad and increasingly irrelevant, as you point out. Not least because, of course, the so-called Maori New Zealanders are also a mix of ethnicities. There are no full-blooded Maori left in New Zealand and very few half Maori. We're a mix of people and that's fantastic, I think. Mm. It also, that doesn't mean though, and, and look, it was interesting to see um, Jim Bolger come out. We talked to him uh, last Friday, was it, uh, Ben? We looked, talked to Jim Bolger. He and Doug Graham have come out and said, look, this is a real issue. And they seem to be getting on your bandwagon saying the government needs to say what the end game is here. Yeah, and I mean, what the government is clearly indicating is the end game is the one summarised in that document, Hey Pua Pua. The Prime Minister insists that's not the government agenda, but everything she's doing, in fact, suggests that it is the government's agenda. And it's a very dangerous agenda indeed. Uh, what happens next year with these issues, Don? We've got an election that tends to focus the mind and the populace. Uh, well, I mean, at the moment, there are two political parties absolutely adamant they want no part of co-governance. That's the ACT Party and New Zealand First. You've got the, the well, National Party saying... I think you might find New Zealand... Uh, that, uh, sorry, New Zealand First. You did say New Zealand First. So New Zealand First well, and Act. Uh, yeah, New Zealand First, Winston Peters anyway, is, is uh, totally opposed to any form of racism. I give him full marks for that. He's been consistent in that for a long time. Uh, David Seymour is unambiguously opposed to this kind of racist nonsense. The National Party has said we're opposed to co-governance in public services. Not entirely clear yet. Uh, what that covers, but uh, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's going to be a big debate this coming year. Do you trust National not to basically <laughs> cave to wokeism? And I'll be honest, I look at Mr Luxon and you say there are limited promises about this. He spends a lot of time saying he's learning to speak to Rayo, and I guess he's hunting what he thinks is the woke middle class vote or, or middle New Zealand vote. Um, do you think a national party on this issue, from your perspective, would need a New Zealand First or an Act or both to keep them honest, as it were? Uh, yes, I do, frankly. Yes, I do. There are some members of the National Party Caucus whom I know well who are as strong on this issue as, as you and I are. Well, I don't know probably what you, you are. are. Yeah. <laughs> as I am, yeah. Uh, there are others who are clearly in the woke category and where Chris Luxon is, I'm not sure. Shouldn't you be sure about the leader of the National well, Party? Well, well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hope that before the election comes round, he is strongly opposed to any kind of uh, behaviour in New Zealand which implies that one race is different from another. We are, we are New Zealanders, first and foremost, and everyone should have equal political rights without any superior rights for anybody. Don, despite all this, and it is an issue we need to resolve and maybe will be with us forever, by international standards, we are not a racially divided country, are we? Uh, we're becoming more racially divided, I think. Um, by international standards, no, probably not. But um, I think the, the, the kind of New Zealanders that I, New Zealanders I was brought up in, where there was no distinction by race and people didn't make a big issue of it at all, 
has has now gone. I think, sadly, mm. and and uh, we've been told the story that were it not for uh, colonization, Maori would be a prosperous people. Well, of course, I mean that is that is laughable. No, it's not saying Maori aren't prosperous. And I think well, the I, other problem, Dom, we have is that our media perceptions of Māori, that they're all members of gangs committing crime or on the take somewhere, and the fact is that the vast majority of Māori live law-abiding, decent lives, they pay their taxes, they run their businesses, they send their kids to school, they are just like the rest of us. Well, well they're actually right. And you look at Parliament now, uh, and yes, the Māori caucus within the Labour Party is is very visible but there are maori in every single party in parliament i mean we talked about the act party three of their caucus members are maori mm. Mm. don the other thing too is as we debate these issues which i think new zealanders are increasingly concerned about um we still also do have to put right the wrongs of the past and waitangi claims are legitimate in local and international law, and it would seem to me often people don't separate the issues out. Oh, they're always take, take, taking. Well, they're settling for, you know, two cents in the dollar on most of the claims they have, Māori and iwi groups. We still have to proceed to put the identifiable wrongs of the past right, don't we? Absolutely agree with that, and I've been consistently supportive of treaty settlements all my entire political career. Uh, uh, what I have said is that we should accelerate the process and bring it to an end. Because as long as it drags on, Pākehā New Zealanders are convinced that Māori are ripping us off, and that's not true. Uh, the settlements are, in fact, quite modest in total scale. Uh, and, and too many Māori are thinking that once the settlements come through, they'll be living on the pig's back. And neither of those perceptions are helpful. So we need to, to proceed with the settlement process and get it, get it done with. Uh, Don, I guess on a more personal level, you have been uh, advocating these positions for quite some time. And it would be fair to say that in the political climate of maybe a year ago, two years ago, you, um, people like Rodney Hyde, people like Michael Bassett were out. You were, I think, the Herald banned um, uh, Michael. Michael Bassett. Michael Bassett, yep. uh, I've talked to people in Wellington who have said the most unkind things about you with very little evidence. And there was a <laughs> cult in the culture wars, you guys were taking a hammering and Hobson's Pledge was taking a hammering. Do you feel in the past year there has been a change of attitude or that some of your ideas or concerns now have more traction or are you still pushing the brown stuff uphill? Uh, I think there are many people who are still convinced we're racist, uh, but there are a lot of other people who, who speak, and, and that's the Maori and non-Maori, who speak to me enthusiastically about the points we're making. So I think the climate has changed, and certainly the number of people who are getting our regular uh, messages from Hobson's Pledge has multiplied many times in the last 12 months. It's gone up hugely. Do you think you still operate, though, in a hostile cultural and media environment? Certainly hostile media environment. I mean, the media, as you correctly point out, have banned Michael Bassett. I suspect if I were to offer an article on, on, on the treaty, it wouldn't get very far. Um, but, uh, and that is, that is unfortunate. But still, uh, I think the mood has begun to change and uh, uh, might change quickly because, frankly, if we don't change to a country where every citizen has equal rights, uh, we're in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. Are you getting, and I know we we have talked, though I won't go into detail, are you, is mainstream media television using you as much as they did? Uh, no. Occasionally, if there's something which is very specific on, say, central banking, mm. uh, or the economy, or the inflation rate, or something, I'll get a call. Uh, but uh, those are the only things they get. To uh, <laughs> otherwise, you have been on. largely yeah. deplatformed on. <laughs> That's right, yeah, except from the platform. <laughs> well, we, we, we're open to all comers, no matter what aspect of an argument they produce, and uh, you want to turn up, we'll have you on, to be honest, and that goes for almost uh, almost within reason and decency uh, anyone. Don, I would like to thank you for your contribution um, to the platform and your colleagues um, through your written work and for appearing for interviews um, we get amazing response when you come on, some of it negative, some of it positive, but it is indeed engagement, which is what democracy is all about. 
So uh, a very big thank you to you uh, for your support of the platform uh, this thank year. Thank you, Sean. And happy Christmas to you. Yeah, we may, we may catch up over the break. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, oh. good, good luck to you and yours, Don. That is Don Brash, former leader of the National Party, the ACT Party, uh, member of Hobson's Pledge. I call it Hobson's Choice, which is no choice at all. Uh, Hobson's Pledge. And a man you can hear some very nasty things said about in the chattering classes and amongst the public servants of Wellington. Uh, but a guy who, to me, he, he seems to have uh, views that you might call extreme, but he always expresses them in a reasonable manner, uh, which is important, which is very, very important.